Why would you? See, you fool. It's working. What about that? Is that good enough for your time? Oh, I know it's gross, but that actually happened. And we'll get back to that part of the story, but if I don't give you some context, you're going to have no idea what's going on, and it's just going to seem like a crazy fever dream. This mad scientist, Dr. Stubbins Firth, got into guzzling vomit in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1793. French colonials had immigrated to Haiti, took over the nation, and enslaved a majority of the population. But there was one ex-slave by the name of Toussaint Louverture who started an insurrection against the French rulers. This was called the Haitian Revolution, and the Haitian slaves actually were able to successfully rise up, take back their nation, and found a state that was free of white rulers. And as wars tend to do, it created a lot of refugees, and boatloads of French colonials, along with some of their slaves, fled Haiti and made their way to North America, eventually landing in the docks of Pennsylvania. Little did the people of Pennsylvania or the French colonials know that they were carrying yellow fever with them from Haiti, as well as infected mosquitoes. So once they landed in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, people very quickly started to get sick. However, this was in August, which in the United States they called sickly season because this was the time when people tended to get sick with fevers. So once the French colonials started getting sick and dying, the citizens of Pennsylvania just thought that the French colonials weren't used to the sicknesses in their area, which is why they were weaker and dying. Their arriving during sickly season just accelerated the process. But then it started to spread to the locals and the doctors started to notice that this was not just a seasonal fever. There was something much worse about this. And on top of this, they were shocked to find out that the people who were dying were not the babies. They weren't the old people. They tended to be teenagers and the men who were working on the docks. The men working on the docks tended to be physically fit, so it was an odd thing that they were the ones dying from this fever. But they finally connected the dots and realized that this was a new kind of fever that was brought by the French colonials. They tried to quarantine the refugees to stop it, but by this point, it was too late. It was spreading too fast. So all they could do is get to work and try to find out what was causing it to spread. Since they didn't really have the technology available to them to study diseases the way that we're able to today, they had to use all kind of rudimentary methods. Oh, real quick, could you do me a favor and click on the subscribe button and the notifications bell? Give me a like and a comment. It really helps this channel to grow. Back to the story. The yellow fever was spreading like wildfire and it was killing hundreds and hundreds of people. So they were getting really desperate to figure out what was going on and how could they stop this. Enter Stubbins Firth. Good old Stubbins was a lonely trainee doctor with a heart of gold and a head full of stupidity. While the majority of the doctors in the area who had studied the yellow fever were convinced that it spread through bodily fluids, Stubbins believed the exact opposite of that. He was convinced that the fever was not contagious or spread by people at all because when the refugees arrived it was summer so it was hot and the fever really raged on but when the winter came along and it was cold there were much fewer cases so his conclusion was it isn't spread through humans and certainly not through bodily fluids this of course caused a clash with the other doctors and he eventually had to prove that his theory was true he just decided to do it in the grossest way possible now I wasn't there and this was the 1700s so there's no video or photos or anything like that but from my deep research of the time and scouring historic culture, plus the details of this story, I believe it all went down a little something like this. Look, Dr. Tom, I'm telling you, this doesn't spread through bodily fluids. This fever has killed thousands of people. It's essentially been unstoppable. How can you possibly say it isn't spread through human contact? Because it spread faster in the summer and pretty much died out in the winter. Hello? Prove it. Do a series of scientific tests using the data that we already have. Take a control group of patients, bring them together. It's okay. I got it. So expose myself to the infected bodily fluids. No. Got it. I'm just gonna grab some vomit from vomiting guy over there. See? What do you think? <sighs> nice deep whiff of it. And I feel perfectly fine. Smelling isn't really gonna do anything. Oh, that's not good enough for you? Fine, I'll shove it into my bodily orifices. Uh, no, not that. Oh yeah, see? Let it just, let the juices just soak into my eyeballs. Stubbins, I did not mean. Let that yellow fever just soak right in. Why would you? See, you fool. It's working. It's working, you fool. <gasps> Tom, and you think you're a better doctor than me, Tom? You fool. I, what, oh, that still isn't good enough for you? Fine. What about that? Is that good enough for you, Tom? Is that good enough for you? No yellow fever here. That's the good stuff. Not even a tingle. 
healthy as a Clydesdale. Who's laughing now? We're gonna stop right there because the truth is Stubbins went way beyond what I was willing to show in that sketch. The real Stubbins went as far as to cut himself open and smear the vomit into the open wounds. He would also cover himself in the blood, urine, and saliva of the infected. And here's the shocking thing. Doing all of that nastiness, he actually didn't get yellow fever. And he of course believed that this proved his theory and published a whole paper on it. However, down the road, once more sane doctors had access to more data, they were able to show that the reason why Stubbins never got sick was not because it wasn't contagious at all, but because all of the infected people he was doing tests on were past the stage of infectability. Which means that he pointlessly covered himself in the juices of other people and laughed in the faces of other doctors and proved nothing other than how far he was willing to go to prove a point. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe.